Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and in this video, I want to introduce you to structured logging and the improvements in the debug console in Xcode 15. Specifically, I want to show you how you should consider replacing the majority of your print statements with OS log. I love getting your feedback, so tap the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and leave a comment below. Make sure you subscribe to the video and ring that bell to get notifications of new videos. And if you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. Now, to demonstrate structured logging, I've updated a project that I've used in the past in my Not Another To Do This series. I've updated it to use the new observation framework, but that's not the purpose of this video. Later on in this playlist of WWDC 23 and iOS 17 content, I'll be covering the conversion and the observation framework in depth. However, to get a feeling of the structured logging, I need to have a project, so this is it. So feel free to download the starter project from the link in the description and follow along with me. The completed code is also listed in a link to my GitHub repository. So let's get going. First, let's take a look at what this application does. It's a very basic to-do list application that allows you to create to-dos, as I'm doing here, and the data persists as JSON in the application's documents directory. Every time you perform some kind of action, an entry is printed to the console, along with a bunch of other messages. And to be honest, most of them don't make sense to me, as I suspect that that's because I'm on a beta version of Xcode 15, and these may eventually disappear. It seems to be related to some keyboard entry. So let me clear that log and make some more edits, like marking a to-do complete with a swipe action or deleting another one with another swipe action. Again, you see the print statements in the console. If I edit, I have to use that keyboard, and those other messages appear and get mixed up in my output on the console, making it difficult to find those print statements. Well, there are print statements throughout this project, and I'm going to replace them all eventually, but let me show you what I used to do. Running the application once more displays two print statements. I happen to know where those print statements are in my code now, but in a couple of weeks I'll have to start tracing my code to find them. Also, if they were mixed in with the Xcode messages, I'd have a hard time spotting them. To solve that problem, I often went to the print statements themselves and added an emoji character as another of the variadic parameters, as I'm doing here in the app entry point where I print the path to the documents directory. And again here, where it prints that statement where I load my to-dos. Now running the code at least makes those statements stand out. Let me display the entire width of the console. The problem is, though, it doesn't tell me where they are located in my code. So I got creative and I created a static print function for an enum that I called debug that allows me to choose from one of two different emojis and then add that to the print statement and then optionally extend the print statement to also show me the file locations and line numbers where the print statement is executed. So let me return to those two print statements that I modified and use that debug.print instead, choosing the info case for my icon. Nothing has changed here, but with the extended option that I put in my debug print, I can set it to true as an added argument in each. And then when I print, I'm going to be provided with the file locations. Still, however, I have to navigate from the description provided to that file and location. And this isn't good. There is, fortunately, a better way. In Xcode 15, there have been some improvements to structured logging. So let's return to the data store class where I printed the load to do statement. This is a three step process. First, we import OS log. Next, within the class, I'll create an instance of the logger, and it requires two string arguments a subsystem and a category. The subsystem is typically your target's bundle ID. So I'm going to go and I'm going to copy that. I'm going to enter that as my subsystem string. 
The category is often the name of the class where you're logging information from, but it can be more general as to the process that you might be involved with, and it might span multiple classes. You can create more than one instance of a logger in your class as well. So let's replace the debug print statement with that logger method. When we access our instance and enter a period, we see that we have a number of different options. You can check out the developer documentation on this and see what each of these are intended for, but I'm going to replace my debug print function and only use info and error. And in this case here, since it's information only, I'll choose info. And then the message in each case is an OS logger message, which can be a string literal like we have just used in our print statement. So I'll use it. And let's do the same at our app entry point where I print the location. I have to import OS log. I create an instance of the logger using the subsystem and category. Again, the bundle ID for the subsystem. And for the category, well, this is all about file location, so let me specify that as a string. Then I can replace the debug print with a logger.info method as before, but I'll need to use string interpolation on that path so that we can get it logged properly. Now when I run the app, I see those two print statements look pretty much as they did before, but they are different. If I click on any of them and tap the space bar, I get to see much more detail, including the call site, the type of error, and other things like a timestamp. This may be useful. If you want to see that information in line without having to select an item and hit the space bar, you can tap on these switches here and select the metadata that you want to display in line. I'm just going to select type and category. Doing this displays the icon for info and the category that I specified in the logger. I can also right click on any of these items and choose jump to source to go directly to the call site. But also, since I added metadata to the display in line, I also get a quick link that I can tap on. I can also right click and copy just the row without the metadata as I'm doing here for the location of our documents directory. From here then I can go to Finder. I can do a Command Shift G to bring up the Go to Folder dialog and paste in that path to find the location of my stored JSON file. This might come in handy as well. So let's convert all of our print statements to OS log statements. First, however, I want to make it a bit easier to be more consistent as I hate entering strings for subsystem and category. So let's create a new file called logger plus extension. And in here, we can create an extension to the logger class. But first, we'll need to import OS log. Now I can create an extension to logger. And since our subsystem is going to be our bundle identifier, we can create a static property for that and access it through the bundle.main.bundleIdentifier. You can see that this is an optional property, and if it doesn't exist though, you'll be in trouble, so we can force unwrap here to use it. Next, I want to create a static property for each of our different categories. For example, for file location, I'm going to create a logger using our subsystem's static property. And then for the category, I'm going to enter the string file location. I'm going to create another one then for our data store. And I know that I have some print statements related to file management, so I'm going to create one for file manager as well. So let's go back to data store then and change our logger instance creation to logger.datastore, that static property. This is type safe, so there'll be no worries that I've created another one that will have typos. Similarly, in the app entry point, I'm going to use logger.filelocation. 
Now, if I want to replace all of my print statements then, let me do a search for the word print. The first one in the list is the one in Content View, so I can tap on it to go there. Content View doesn't have an instance of my logger yet, so I'll need to import OS log. Next then, I'm going to create an instance of the file location static property, because that's what I know is here. The print then becomes a logger.info using the same string. And now we can use our search like a checklist. And since I completed this one, I can simply click on it, hit the delete key, and remove it from the list. The next set of print statements are in the data store class, and they are all related to data storage. I've already have the logger instance created here, so I can simply go through and replace each of the print statements with a logger.info statement where that makes sense. And then as I go through them, I can remove them as they are done. This failure to load, however, is more critical, so I'm going to use a logger.error method here. This one is just information, but this one is an error. Next up is the file manager extension. And so here I'll need again to import OS log. But since we're in an extension, I'll need to create a static logger property for our file manager. And then we can replace the two print statements using self.logger and the error case, because these are errors. We'll also need to use string interpolation here, though, to display the error's localized description. Same thing for that second instance. Now, we don't need to do this here in the debug print as I'm no longer using it. So let me run again. I'm going to make a bunch of edits and check out my log. Those error messages that are at the bottom from the update, so I can scroll up to the top and I'll see all of my entries prior to that. And I can jump easily to the call site. Now, if I want to eliminate those error messages, I can filter to display info only. If I do that, however, I'll miss any error message that might happen in the course of my work. And they really mean something, so I'm going to remove the filter for now. What I am going to do, however, is filter out those specific errors that I think are junk. So let me right click and copy only the row without the metadata. And I'm going to paste that into the filter field. Well, now it only displays those ones. But what I can do is tap on the selector beside it and specify not equal here. So let's remove only those particular log entries. So let me force an error. I'm going to copy the file location again, and I'm going to go to that folder. Now I'm going to open this JSON file in the text editor, and I'm going to invalidate it. This means it's not valid JSON. When I run it now, though, my error is displayed, as well as my info. If I had lots of them, I could add to our filter by displaying error only. Now I can tap on that line and go directly to the call site where I see it is an error as a result of JSON decoding. So let me quickly revert that change. I'm going to run once more and create a new entry. Those pesky error messages are back. Fortunately, the filter remembers recent filters. 
so I can simply choose that one that excluded them. Now, print statements are often used for debugging and printing out objects to check to see what you're getting is what you expect. So let me run this app once more and create a new entry, but this time I'm going to mark it as completed as I create it. Oops, it appears I have a bug. Why wasn't that completion status updated? I can still swipe to mark as to completed, but I want to show complete right away. So let's go to the entry where we added the new to do. From here, I can go to the call site for this function and see that the data store add to do is completed here using the to do from our form. So let me add a breakpoint here and run again. I'm going to create a new to do and mark it as complete. When I do that, the application breaks and pauses, providing me with access to the LLDB debugger. In iOS 15, debugger print access was improved, so now your default go to to use instead of PO is simply P. So let's P or print out the to do that has been added. And then it's clear to me that the completed property for our form was ignored when the to do was created. So I can fix that here. Let me remove that breakpoint once more and run one last time. And you create a new to do and mark it completed. There you go, bug fixed. And remember, you can go back and reuse previous created filters to remove that junk from your console. Well, I hope you learned something new in this video that you're gonna be able to use when you are creating your own projects. If you did and you enjoyed the video, please leave a comment and give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to get notified when new videos drop. Comments and thumbs up help draw more people to my channel. I appreciate that. Thanks for watching.